Crohn's disease, stomach ulcers, arthritis, psoriasis, just some of the most serious and painful immune and inflammatory conditions, but the list goes on. And often the treatments are painful and have side effects. Can we approach this in a new way to not only support recovery, but potential prevent and treat these? With the discovery of KPV, many peptide researchers are thinking so. This powerful peptide is naturally produced in the body and plays a crucial role in inflammation reduction and immune response support. Let's take a deep dive into KPV where I'll be sharing all my research and discoveries on this compound. So before I begin, I must offer the disclaimer that I'm not a doctor, that all the information in this video is for purely educational and entertainment reasons. For any medical concerns or questions you may have, please seek out a licensed professional. Do not consult this video. By watching this video, you agree to the terms, and let's get straight into this video. So what is KPV? KPV is a peptide that's found naturally in the body. It's actually produced by the hormone alpha MSH. It's most commonly used for autoimmune and inflammatory conditions, but it also is seen to have a positive impact with the stomach, with your nervous system, with your joints, and your vascular system. And because KPV is such a small peptide, it has a wide application of being used in pill form, injecting form, cream form, nasal form, which allows it to have many different applications. So how does KPV work? It works by targeting inflammation areas in the body and it travels to those areas and once it's there, it can enter the cell's nucleus and it can inhibit NFKB, which is a controller for inflammation. So it goes to inflammation, goes to the cell's nucleus, it enters the nucleus and it shuts down inflammation, which is pretty cool in my opinion. And researchers are seeing this being displayed internally and as well externally such as helping with wound infection, that's like antimicrobial, antifungal, helping with the stomach to lower inflammation, to heal ulcers. It's pretty cool how this peptide has different healing benefits or healing properties all throughout the body, internally and externally. So what are the research benefits of KPV? First, it helps reduce inflammation by reducing the signaling as well as cytokines. Another research benefit is that it promotes a balanced inflammatory response, especially in the gut. Because sometimes you can have crazy inflammation responses and that helps calm it down when necessary. It can promote wound healing, especially seen in topical applications. It can be antimicrobial and antifungal, again, seen a lot in topical applications. It can improve skin health, it can improve skin regeneration, and as well it can help heal ulcers in the stomach, which is oftentimes why you see KPV in oral form for stomach issues. So what are the research side effects I've seen? I've seen nausea, diarrhea, and fatigue. And those seem to be more on the rare side, but overall KPV seems to be a very well tolerated peptide, similar to BPC-157 and TB-500. All those peptides seem to be very well tolerated from the research we know right now. So now let's go into the research dosing and cycling. And this is coming from studying the peptide experts, Reddit forums, subjective experiences, and my own personal experience. So the goal with KPV is to return the body to balance. If there's no reason to use KPV, then there's no reason to use it. So if there's no inflammation, there's no autoimmune condition, then why use KPV? So with injecting, a sub-Q injection, I've seen anywhere from 250 micrograms to 500 micrograms once or twice a day. For oral, same idea, 250 micrograms up to 500 micrograms once or twice a day, ideally on an empty stomach. For creams forms, I've seen 7.5 milligrams concentration, which is a little hard to actually figure out actually how that would actually look, but you would use a higher dose for cream version. And that's most oftentimes I've seen in like cut wounds or any kind of like psoriasis conditions. So to summarize this, KPV is used when it's actually a reason to use it. I mean, for all peptides in general, for injecting an oral form, anywhere from 250 to 500 micrograms, one to two times a day. For cream version, 7.5 milligrams applied twice a day. Now let's go into other peptides I would take with KPV. The first would be the glow combo, which is coming very popular, and that is BPC-157, TB-500, and GHKCU. Next would be thymosin alpha-1, especially if I was fighting some kind of autoimmune condition. Next would be LL-37, another amazing inflammatory peptide to help with autoimmune or inflammatory conditions. Next would be Humanin, SS31, or MOTC. These all really work on the mitochondria, which can be very, very important for many different health conditions and inflammatory conditions. And the last group of peptides, just to throw it in there, because I think they're very beneficial for almost any situation, would be some kind of GHRH with a GHRP. So one peptide that creates growth hormone and one that releases it. I think this can be an amazing way to help heal the body, especially after the infection or the condition has calmed down or is healed. 
So now let's go into some supplements I would take with KPV, and it largely depends on the goal, but there's so many different ways to use KPV. But first would be some kind of collagen peptides. I think they're amazing just for giving the building blocks for many different things, your joints, your skin, your hair, your nails. Next would be curcumin. I think it's an amazing anti-inflammatory. Next would be methane blue, which has many properties to clean up the body and cleanse the body. Also has many properties that are neuroprotective. Next would be some kind of mushroom mix. I'm a big fan of mushrooms. I think they have so many different benefits, helping with your immune system, helping with clarity, helping with your brain health. Like they're overall very, very powerful, but especially when it comes to your immune health. And lastly would be some kind of NAD support, included thion support. I think those two things can greatly support the body in numerous ways. Now let's go and do some lifestyle tools I would add. First would be a animal-based diet with fasting, especially longer fasts to really cleanse out the body and then eating whole foods, ideally more animal-based. Next would be functional training, can be an amazing way to heal the body. Next would be lymphatic massage, amazing way to get out the lymph and as well to help support the immune system. Next would be acupuncture and massage, Big, big fan of body work, especially acupuncture in so many different ways to help with the chi flow and can help support the immune system. Next would be infrared sauna, especially longer infrared saunas can be very detoxing. Colon therapy, such as colon cleanses or enemas, I'm definitely a fan of that in the right place, in the right context. Mud therapy, which sounds kind of weird guys, but mud therapy can be very, very beneficial from helping just with your skin to actually all parts of your body. I've seen some very positive things with mud therapy. Next would be HBOT, which is hyperbaric oxygen therapy, which has so many benefits, but can overall support the immune system. And the last thing I want to add in there is mineral soaks, which can be so good for the body, but soaking in a hot spring, that's the most ideal, or just soaking in a magnesium tank can be amazing for your skin and as well help many conditions. So what are the overall pros of KPV? The first pro is that I like how it can enter cells and it can really shut down inflammation. And on top of it, it comes from your body, which is pretty cool. Another pro I like is that it has many different ways to be used. It can be used oral form, it can be used injecting form, it can be used nasal form, it can be used topical form. Because it's such a small particle, it has many different applications. And the last pro is that it has a high safety profile. It seems very well tolerated from what we know so far. So overall, it's a pretty amazing peptide. So what are the major cons of KPV? And to be honest, I don't really see like any huge red flags. The only one I can tell you guys is that we're still researching it. There's not tons of like clinical research, but just so far from researching the peptide community, it seems pretty well tolerated and pretty safe. So what's my overall opinion of KPV? So personally, I've never used KPV as I've never really had a reason to, but overall, I think it's amazing how it works, how it can enter cells and can shut down inflammation, which is pretty cool. And I love how there's many different ways to use it from cream form to pill form to injecting. So it's just pretty amazing peptide because many peptides don't have that versatility. As well, if I ever had like a serious infection, especially gut infection or gut problems, I would definitely try KPV because I've heard some amazing stories about helping with that. But overall, I need to do more research on this peptide, but from what I know of now, it seems pretty amazing, but that could change in the years to come. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching. If you want to really master peptide therapy, you want to support my channel, I recommend either looking into my book, Peptides Made Simple, or join Regenerative Academy. I put so much work in there, and I'll be in there answering any questions you may have. So if you like what I do and you want to learn more, definitely check those out. But thank you for watching, and have an amazing day.